That's right, America. Go ahead and enjoy. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Oh, by the way, I wear, I wear vests now. Vests are cool. <laughs> here's the thing. Now, uh, the last couple of nights, I've had to Yen and Lisa on the show, and, uh, and you know, because in a strange quirk of fate, every time we have them on the show, the ratings go through the roof for this show. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought, well, this is a funny thing. So last night, as a joke, we did it again. We brought it into Yen and Lisa. We looked at the ratings this morning. <laughs> it's like, what is this? And then I asked a couple of people around here, and they said, well, they're attractive and not you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to be here now from now on. And I've noticed that uh, Tu Yen uh, is originally from uh, Vietnam. Only Vietnam. Well, Orange County. You're, uh, yeah, you're... <laughs> family are from Vietnam. And Lisa is from Ireland. Yes. And our ratings in Vietnam and Ireland skyrocketing. <laughs> so I've had this idea. Like, every night, I'll come out and uh, to Yen and Lisa can be dressed in different outfits from history. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, uh, beer garden girls or um, vampires. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Although I don't know if vampires are historically accurate. Anyway, what do you think? Ah, you're not allowed to speak. Fine. <laughs> no, you are, actually, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see why this is a ratings crack attack winner. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Charles Schwab. Let's talk about the personal attention you and your money deserve. Talk to Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. You're starting to really get to me now. With your completely, completely believable love for me. And not your fear of being thrown out in disgrace into the streets. You're not even good enough to be in the audience for that crappy show. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, indeed. Although our president is in a little bit of hot water, uh, in his uh, new biography, uh, or in a new biography about him, oh, God, see, it. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights I can't even get started. I'm like, oh. Anyway, a new biography about the president states that he took artistic liberties in his memoir. It says that he fictionalized details for narrative clarity. I'll be doing this a lot tonight. <laughs> What the biography means that President Obama, you know, made some crap up. And I'm like, well, how is this news? He's a politician. How do you think he'd get to be the president <laughs> to make crap up? You want to be a senator? You start create, you, you come out of college, you start lying, and you just don't quit. <laughs> He's been making stuff up for years. Look, look at this picture from his vacation last year. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you try to tell me that's real? Look at that. <laughs> 
Now, normally a little fib about a girlfriend wouldn't be a big deal, but, uh, you know, like the rest of us, the president is allowed to stretch the truth now and then a little bit. For instance, every morning he can tell Joe Biden that if he fetches the paper, he'll get to drive Train Force One. <laughs> Well, of course, that's a lie. There was no train force one, but Biden doesn't know that. <laughs> He's just running around in circles going, Biden working on the railroad. <laughs> anyway, Obama made this stuff up in a memoir, though. You see, in memoirs are supposed to be, what's the word? Um, true. <laughs> or are they? After all, the word uh, memoir is derived from the old French, the word from memory, memoir. <laughs> That's the old French word. <laughs> That's all old French words. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nobody's perfect, you know. You can't remember everything properly, I think. I can't remember. Well, <laughs> anyway, presidential memoirs often leave out embarrassing stuff. In Lyndon Johnson's memoir, he skipped uh, a whole passage about getting burped on by Forrest Gump, and I saw it on film. <laughs> And it's better to leave stuff out than, than Herbert Hoover's uh, autobiography, which was 1,600 pages long. I heard that, I'm like, 1,600 pages? Hoover, damn! Ah, see what I did? You see what I did? You see what I did there? Hoover, damn! Wow. Hey, an applause break on a Hoover, damn pun? Top shelf tonight, Top man. shelf, Jeffy boy. It's weird to me that Obama chose to fabricate uh, in this memoir because it wasn't something cool he made up like hitting six home runs in a little league game or faking his own birth certificate. No, it was, <laughs> it was something lame. He just compressed the details of several uh, girlfriends into one character. And I'm thinking, oh, very smooth. <laughs> There's one thing I know that women love, it's being blurred together with other women. <laughs> Barry, you're an idiot. <laughs> Big talk for someone who's an immigrant, but I got my passport. <laughs> anyway, another revelation in this new book, when Obama was younger, his uh, uh, girlfriend he had said to him, I love you, and he responded, thank you. <laughs> Which, I, to be fair, he was only 22 at the time. I mean, and, and the only president that ever knew how to really handle the ladies was Bill Clinton. <laughs> he did. When one of Clinton's conquests told him, I love you, he just said, thanks. <laughs> By the way, that's a great pantsuit, Hillary. <laughs> Clinton! Clinton was in a league of his own when it came to working the ladies. I'm not making this up. This is true. In 1996, Clinton saw a 4,000-year-old Incan mummy at a museum. And he said, and I quote, you can look this up. He said, you know, if I were a single man, I might ask that mummy out. <laughs> that's a good-looking mummy. <laughs> Anyway, a lot of Democrats are worried that this fabrication thing is distracting Americans from Obama's recent accomplishments. Like, um, well, they're worried anyway. And uh, <laughs> the reaction across the political spectrum has been pretty predictable. You know, Fox News is like, aha, he's a liar, we told you. And MSNBC is like, he made it up, he's a literary genius. <laughs> and Bravo are like, girls, oh, girls. <laughs> Mark Twain once said, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. And that takes on special meaning when you consider that Mark Twain never said that. <laughs> Google that. <laughs> That's true, right? Anyway. I recently wrote a memoir. I know how hard it is to remember the exact details of stuff that happened decades ago. Luckily, though, I had a crack team of researchers on my side. They were known as the Scottish Police. Apparently... <laughs> no, is it? Apparently, when you get arrested, people fill out a report and they write it down and they explain why and they attach one or two or sometimes 30 extra pages telling what actually happened. You know, even after being tased several times, the naked suspect continued singing show tunes. <laughs> what can I say? I was happy and I was on angel dust. <laughs> anyway, the publisher told me it's legally okay to change names of people in a memoir to save them from embarrassment. But when I tried to take them up on it, they said I wasn't allowed to change my own name. <laughs> So in the end, I only changed that one name in my memoir. It was a young comedian that I had sex with years ago and I didn't want to embarrass her, so I just called her Joan Blivers. <laughs>
It was Joan Rivers. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have to say, oh, maybe I would, yeah. That's one good looking mummy. <laughs> anyway. I find that the older I get, uh, not only does my memory change, but my feelings about my memories change. Like, the things that I used to be embarrassed about, you know, I'd be like, oh, my God, I did that. Oh, no. Now, uh, years after, I'm like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I did that. You did that? Yes, I did. Yeah, in Amsterdam with twins. <laughs> I still talk to those guys. That... <laughs> you know, in about 10 years from now, I will probably wouldn't be ashamed of doing this show. <laughs> you know, but I, the thing is, I've said I've aired all my dirty laundry in public. You know, that's it. The only thing I've got to fear now is that one of my co-workers here would write a tell-all. But the author would have to be someone I've mistreated. A heartless bastard. <laughs> <laughs> A heartless bastard with the memory, perhaps, of a computer. <laughs> nah, you'd never write a tale all about me and you, would you? No. No. Oh. Anyway, what is this a tale? No, no, nothing. No, no. I'll, I'll just sit here and smolder quietly. <laughs> Do you have a publishing deal? Maybe. <laughs> Are you writing a tale old memoir about me? Could be. Does it include the night in Amsterdam with the twins? You're damn right it does. Yeah. <laughs> Can I read it first? I don't think so. All right. All right, you want to... Uh... I'd love to. Okay, do it. Tonight's program is brought to you by my new autobiography, I Gay Robot. Or is that a second banana in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? the news that Jeff Peterson has announced his tell-all biography, which will be called... Twelve feet from an outlet, one inch from destiny. <laughs> <laughs> one inch from destiny? Yeah, I, I can't talk about that part on the air. Yeah. <laughs> Destiny's the name of that stripper, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you still keep in touch with that guy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you're writing, uh, if you're writing a tell-all book, are you writing it all with your right hand? Because that's the only one that moves. I think I have a new chapter for my book. Yeah, a whole chapter <laughs> about the fact that I said your right hand. The only this book's gonna suck. <laughs> yeah, no different than this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Do we not applaud that? <laughs> You know, I wear vests now. Can you wear vests now? Can you talk to someone and get a vest? I certainly could have a conversation with someone. Yeah, get that handled. We wear vests now on this show. All the guests have to wear vests. All the audience have to wear vests. Everybody. What the hell's going on? Around? I've gone power crazy. I have no power, and it's making me crazy. <laughs> All right, what time is it, Jeffrey P? It's tweet mail time. Tonight's tweet mail is brought to you by my new autobiography, Conversations in My Pants. <laughs> This is uh, from Malcolm in Springfield. Uh, it says, Dear Craig and Jeff, I'm looking for a new couch for my apartment. Any particular styles you'd recommend? Yes, uh, why not go for something like this? Crap. <laughs> then your guests won't feel intimidated by the burgundy-colored cheap furniture that you have. Uh, no, you know what kind of couch I like? The shag couch. <laughs> you enjoy the shag couch? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the shag couch is the couch that's made of, uh, what do you call that stuff? Shag. Yeah. 
Actually, I think The Shag Couch was the name of a movie you and I were in once, wasn't it? Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. You should, there'll be a chapter about that in your autobiography. No, it's already in there. Is it? <laughs> the Shag Couch, Amsterdam, 1987. <laughs> this is from Kelly in Lexington, Kentucky. You ever been... Uh... Oh, I love Lexington, yeah. Yeah, you, really? Have you been right. there? Yeah, I've been, been through there a couple times. Yeah? Why were you in Lexington? I, I was uh, purchasing a shag couch. <laughs> uh, Kelly says, hi, Craig and Jeff. Do you guys ever ask each other for advice? Oh, I don't know, Jeff. Do you, do, should I answer this? Well, you, you could. I just asked him for advice. <laughs> do you see? Oh. God, are you people awake? <laughs> what do you think? Do I ask you for advice? Sometimes you, you come to me, you confide in me after the show. Yeah, you, did you write about this in your book? <laughs> Did you write about how we're great friends and we hang out and everything? Y yeah. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, we don't, we don't like each other. I I in real life, we're like, uh, who are the other two people that don't like each other, but they pretend to like each other? Regis and Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> they do like each other. Yeah. This is from David in San Antonio, Texas. You ever been down there? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah? You ever been to Texas? <laughs> you ever been to oh, man. Top shelf. All right. <laughs> Hi, Craig and GP. I've been drooling a lot while I sleep lately. Does this happen as you get older? Oh, yes, I'm afraid it does. <laughs> I've noticed I start drooling when I'm driving. I'm like... And I notice whenever I get a photograph taken of me and I'm not prepared for the photograph to be taken, <laughs> I'm always like this. <laughs> With a little pool of spit in my bottom teeth. Yeah. This is from Katie in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Never been to Milwaukee? Oh, yeah, love You know what? We made Milwaukee famous. We made Milwaukee famous. Made a loser out of... Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, GP in the ferns. Uh, an ex-boyfriend wants to fly in to visit. It'd be fun, but do I open that door? <laughs> you have a door in your vagina? <laughs> wow. said, who's that at the door? We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Next guest is a legend. She's got a new children's book, The Very Fairy Princess. Here comes the flower girl. I can't wait to get my hands on that one, Jeff. Yeah, and the book too. And the book too. <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Julie Andrews, everyone. <laughs> Happy that you're here. Finally, a bit of class in this dump. <laughs> yeah, it's love. You look sensational. I love the white outfit. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's nice. You look um fresh. Yeah. Well, you always look fresh. Yes, and I am. You, yes. you look fresh. You are a little bit fresh. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, do you know who was here recently? Carol Burnett. Oh, friend. my chum. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And she said she told me a story about you and her making out. Oh yes, there was one. One. Isn't that Yes, 
course you know. Well, she told you the story. Well, she I... did. Yeah, you were making out to try and... Uh, who was it you were trying to... Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols, yeah. We were yeah, trying to, to get him. Wind him up, yeah. Wind him up, and it didn't work. He no, because was... the elevator doors opened, and you thought it was going to be Mike, and it was uh, the First Lady. No, it was Secret Service, first of all. It was the Secret Service? And then it was the First Lady. Uh, yeah. Well, Carol says it was the First Lady. Right. I'm, I think she embroidered a bit. The Secret Service now would pay extra to see you guys make it. <laughs> Yes, they would. Yeah, they'd be like, would I well, be? actually, I don't know. The trouble is they wouldn't pay extra. They'd argue with you and go, no, come on, not uh, 800 bucks. No, well, they might. I don't know. Well, it was a silly gag, and we had the best... I mean, we were laughing so hard, and Carol ended up at the... Did she tell you that she ended what? up at the back of the couch? At the back of the couch? Yes, she was laughing so hard, and she was so... She went right over the back of a couch? Well, yeah, no, well, she went round <laughs> to the back of the couch. She laughed herself off of her seat no, and round it. No, no, no. Listen. <laughs> Pay attention. Why are you so angry at me? I thought you were... were, were... No, never mind. No, I'm not angry. Uh, no, no, she just... We, with the, when it failed and the Secret Service were in the elevator and we looked up, she was so mortified that she got up and went around the back. Oh. Oh, and then, yes, I see. And then, supposedly, Lady Bird came out. Lady Bird Johnson? Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. then uh, she turned around and came back and looked over the back of the couch <laughs> and said, are you Carol Burnett? And Carol said, yes, and this is my friend Mary Poppins. And that's, <laughs> that's the story. That's one that, part of the story. <laughs> I see. Right, now, listen, what we got here, uh, let's get the plug fest out of the way. You got the uh, Princess Diaries movie with the Princess Diaries 2. That's right. Yeah, Do you know you about and, that? Yeah, no, that's lovely. That's you and that's Bruce Willis in the front. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen, this yeah, last week was National Princess Week. Yeah, my favourite week of the year, yes. sure. <laughs> did you celebrate? Yes, of course. I did it in the way that I always celebrate <laughs> National Princess Week. <laughs> Would you care to explain? I can't legally tell you. Okay. All right, anyway, uh, um, Disney were, were releasing the double... Uh, double princesses. Uh, du double princesses, really. one and two, yeah. and packaging it on in Blu-ray, and it, it is quite special. Yeah, do, uh, what, I don't know what Blu-ray is. What is that? Well, it's, uh, actually, I don't either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, blu -ray so says, just marvelous. Yeah, here. well, I tell you what, you want to get this thing on the Blu-ray or you're a loser. <laughs> Incidentally, I see that you're wearing a waistcoat these days. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, there, it's a waistcoat, or if you're an American citizen, as I am, it's a vest. A vest. Yes. But, uh, but we, of course, uh, I'd have called it a waistcoat back in the old country. Yes, and, it, and a vest would be something totally different. Yeah, a vest would be what they would call a tank top. Well, sort of an undershirt, really. Right, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, but... <laughs> I am, um, but it, it's fetching. It really is. Fetching. I wear them now. They're cool. All the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the time. Even uh, during uh, Princess Week, it I actually, really? yeah. Well, underneath... yes, but it's purple or, or royal. Well, it's 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 purple underneath. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're thinking, you're, the joke you're thinking of and not saying is just as dirty as the one I'm thinking <laughs> of and not saying. You know me too well. Yes, uh, I do, yeah. <laughs> we've right, now, we've the... been on this show. I've been on too often, actually. No, no, I've been on too often. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, now, you write these with... Uh, my with, daughter. With your daughter, which I think is lovely. It is lovely. Belie quite seriously, it's an absolute joy. And yeah. She's a, she's what age is your daughter? Writer. She, oh gosh, she's in her 40s now. Oh, right, I I'm see. going to be... So she, she can do a big joined-up writing, then? Yes, she yeah, can. Right. Yes, she can. But this was inspired by her daughter, her little girl, Hopi. And uh, it, it, it's... Lovely illustrations. They well. are. Aren't yeah. they wonderful? And I, I have to tell you, it, uh, it, within five days, it went up to number three on the bestseller. That's fantastic. Isn't that nice? Now, now, what does that, what does that look like, you know, money-wise? Is that a lot? Is that like a well, million bucks every a, time it goes up? I don't know, but it means that a lot of books... You probably have a, you have a lot of money now. Uh, well, from your lips to... Yeah, yeah, no, it's a lot <laughs> To my I... pocket, I should say. Yeah, excuse me. No, don't go there. What? <laughs> I was going to say, though, but if you need some extra cash, a tell-all book... Yes. That's the way. Um, have you written a memoir? I, well, you I have. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, did you edit, compress any of your old lovers? Uh, like like uh, Mr. Obama? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was reasonably tactful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to be. I remember when I talked about... <laughs> when I was talking about my ex-girlfriends, or, uh, you know, one ex-girlfriend, I only had one, and then I was married to my wife. Uh, yeah. And it was my wife who was my ex-girlfriend. I've only been with one woman my whole life. Really? That's a... That's... That's a fake... Look at yeah, me! Yeah, Look know. at me! <laughs> 
we have to take a commercial break. Uh, do you want to do it or will I do it? Uh, uh, we're going to go to break now, folks, OK? That was lovely. The yes, and then and then yeah. that's all gonna. Anyway, we better. Um... Yes. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm here talking to uh, Julie Andrews. We we try and keep it quiet during the break. <laughs> <laughs> so we're out of time, Julie. We are. Well, not really, but I like to start the second part with that because it usually takes a long time to wind things up. Oh, OK. You. Like, okay. I try and get it finished, but, you know... How quickly time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> you know, I detect a certain lack of sincerity in what you just said. Well... No, no, I really... <laughs> We you did it again! You did no, it again! Yes, you did. You did the well. Pause, pause, pause. You know pause. what? You yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so how do you want to finish it up? Do you want an awkward pause? Do you want a mouth organ? Or do you want to go for the big cash prize? Oh, I'll go for the big cash prize. Yeah. What time is it, Sean? It's time for the big cash prize. Yeah. $50 in a bag. In quarters. In quarters? In quarters, yes. Very Two useful. ways to win. You can either answer my question, which is here, or yeah. you can guess what's in my box, which is here. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine a box in my head. I don't know what's in it. Only Jeff knows what's in the box. You try and guess what's in the box. If you get it right, great. If you get it wrong, something awful happens. Okay, Jeff, right? All right. He can't do that. He ca no, no. Do this. If you can do that, you can do that. <laughs> okay, Jeff, yeah, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, I'll go for imagining what's in the box in your head. You don't want to try this question because it's really fun. Is it? Can well, I? I'll just ask you the. Can I'll just I tell do you both? the question. Yeah, you can do both. All right, quickly. All right then. Iceland we're is... out of time, folks. Right. Well, does that mean you get a hundred dollars? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Go on. Do you want to double down and go for a hundred dollars? I keep an extra fifty bucks here in case I have to bribe any guests who are crap. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Like, All right, let's do it. Well, because, look, you know, if, if you've got a guest that comes out, you see why I say we're out of time before we start? Because yes. of, Yeah, right. So, if you have a guest who's rubbish, and they go, I don't know, I don't know, and then you go, does this refresh the <laughs> Just one dollar? Well, you start, you know, you get them going, see, you know. I see, I see. Anyway. All right, double up. Does this refresh? Anyway, right. So, $50, if you can, guess what's in my box and answer the question. Wow. All right. Oh, I no, you said 100 No, that's what I meant, 100 100 Oh, Okay. All right. $100 in the bag with the dollar sign on it, right? Uh, chances of my getting this right are very remote. I oh, I, I wouldn't think so. Okay. I, I, I've got a feeling you're going to do well. Okay. Because it's CBS money. Uh, <laughs> all right, first question. Mm. Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Its capital city is Reykjavik. I know that. You're right, good. Yes. Now, true or false, turkeys are bisexual. <laughs> Let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> well, uh, my knowledge of turkeys is not extensive, but uh, are you giving me a hint? Yes. No, I'm giving you the answer. Yes, they're bisexual. Oh, they are. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, you're halfway there. You're halfway there. Ah. Are they really? Yeah, they are. Well, good for them. Good. <laughs> good for those turkeys. Yes. Uh, My God, I'll look at them with a whole new respect from now on. Yeah. Well, you don't respect just plain old heterosexual turkeys. <laughs> I'm not eating this turkey. It's a heterosexual. <laughs> you don't... No, never mind. Okay, I, so I, now... I was going to go with the stuffing. Um, no, no, all right, no. All right. Now, um... Now, now you have to guess what's in my box. I, okay. For the, for the big money prize. For the big money prize. All right. Okay. I'm imagining a box. You're imagining a box. Okay. How big is the box? I'm not telling you. Okay. All right. Uh, you have to guess what's in it. Jeff, have you got the box? Yeah, it's, it's purple on the inside. All right. Purple on the inside. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jeff. You're very good. Very sweet. Uh, I'm imagining you're thinking about maybe a princess tiara in your box in your head. That is correct. It is correct! Oh, the great wow. Welcome back. Hang on, hang on. I wanna I wanna try a new thing. Hold on. Alright, you ready?
Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's creepy. All right. Uh, my next guest is a terrific actor. I mean, really, really good. Uh, he stars in Person of Interest, which is Thursday nights on CBS. But, Craig, you said he was a really good actor. I know, and he's still on CBS. <laughs> Take a look at that. Craig Ferguson, late night talk show douche. <laughs> Please welcome Michael Emerson, everybody. Michael It's lovely to see you. I'm a huge fan of your work, and I am very happy to see you wearing a vest. <laughs> what gentleman goes out without one? I tell you, it's no gentleman. No gentleman goes out without a vest. That's what I think since I've been watching Downton Abbey. The waistcoat, the tie, the waistcoat, collar. The tie, yeah. Do, do, are you a, something of a dandy in your life? You well, seem quite fashionable. I've played historical roles on the stage so much that I... I well, you've got the sideburns for I, 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 There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That I, I feel comfortable in those clothes, and I, I you know, I, I know what it means to be well dressed. Yes, you do. And it, it gives you a social advantage. It does. It do, that and the fact that you, if you talk like this and hold your head back, <laughs> people kind of treat yeah, you seriously. That's right. And also, you should have a badge saying, yeah, there were two badges there. That was Jim Clazy Weasel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. The show's a big hit, though. Congratulations. It's doing well. Thank it's you. It's doing great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> that must feel nice. <laughs> yes, <it does. laughs> so, listen, um, you're a fan of Scottish punk rock, I hear. Well, I, I grew up at the right time, and right. I, I bought a few punk records in my day, and I went to see a few shows. And... Now, did you go to Scotland to see the, these? No, no, oh, I, right, I didn't. I, I think I saw the Rizillos, which is the band. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, they were a great band. I, I, I saw them in New York at some club whose name has escaped me. I see. Did you have a substance abuse problem at the time? <laughs> No, I, I think it was just the noise. <laughs> oh, the noise. That's what did it. The noise was a problem. It was so noisy, I blacked out and woke up on the floor of a Piggly Wiggly with a sore ass and a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I've been at some pretty loud clubs as well, Michael. You remember those times. Yes, I do. So you went to uh, CBGB's, I guess, and uh, the Mud Club and those places? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. That's Max's Kansas City. Yeah, I never went there. Danceteria. Danceteria I went to. That was to. a good club. That was like on eight levels, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was like a video game. The more drugs you took, the higher you got. In the... There was a big scene at Studio 54 in those days, but I, I, never, I never had enough money to go. I never got into Studio 54. Well, I think it had closed down by the time I went to New York. Uh, I lived in New York in 84. Ah. Right. I moved to New York from a small town in Iowa in 1976. Wow, that's fantastic. You can believe that. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of the small town in Iowa? I grew up in Toledo, Iowa. Not even Toledo. No. The other one? I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the other one? Toledo... There's a Toledo, Ohio. And Ohio, yeah. There are a couple of them in the Pacific Northwest. Really? Yeah. Dest you're Toledo, Iowa? Destinations all. <laughs> So, uh, were you in uh, theater in Toledo before you moved to New York? I, I did a bit. Really? I did trod the boards a bit, yes. Is at, there a big theater school? scene in Toledo, uh, Iowa? No, just in the, you know, what passed for a drama club at our consolidated rural high school. <laughs> that sounds all right. What kind of productions did you put on? We did the, you know, the classic chestnuts of the American stage. You can't ah. take it with you, Thurber Carnival. Our time? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. You I would always play old men. Why? Because you had the sideburns? Because, be, that I had a I had an odd voice and spectacles and they weren't going to give me the romantic lead so that's that's Why what I Why the hell no? I think you know an odd voice and spectacles that's romantic. But the, it wasn't every guy in the club that was willing to spray his hair white and do the you know the bent yeah. over and all of that you know yeah, yeah. so it was it was my own ham bone that got me into the situation. <laughs> About a nickel for every time I'd said that. <laughs> in the dance interior. Yeah. Yes. So you still live in New York City? Yes. Oh, it's lovely there, isn't it? We, we, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, yeah. I used to live uh, down near Venero's Bakery on 11th Street. Oh, sure. Oh, it's very nice. Do you enjoy baked goods? <laughs> 
I'll take a cannoli if someone presses it upon me. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I said that in the dance interior. <laughs> yeah, I like the baked goods. Do you cook? Just a bit. Br breakfast, primarily. I, bacon? I, Are we talking bacon? Uh, yes. Good. <laughs> but I, I enjoy when other people cook for me also. You're talking restaurants here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of restaurants do you like? Do you enjoy the sushi? A lot of, a lot of the actors yes, like the sushi. I, I do, as a matter of fact. I didn't realize that it was a popular actor. Oh, thing. yeah. The actors love it. You know why? Lots of talking. Yeah. Lots of talking while you're there and, and uh, things yeah. to do. Sharing and the little... Sharing, sticks. talking, uh, little bits of business with the sticks. Yeah. And then the, ooh, have you tasted this? Mm, right. Yes, I yeah. had this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The oh, all... wide-eyed faces that you make at each other. Right, yeah, As yeah. if to say, now that is some Wow, do, yeah. Would you ever eat, uh, you know, a snail from the bottom? Oh, let me tell you about a time I did do that yes. when I was in rep in Toledo, Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> The urchins, the sea snakes, the the octopus. Are you a, are you a, are you a courageous eater? I mean, will you eat? No, I, I was at one time. At one time, I could handle about any spice that was thrown at me, but I I think I did some damage to myself and <laughs> maybe in one of those noisy clubs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a milder diet now. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've got to have that uh, camera thing up. Uh, up, up the yeah, road. yeah. E every five years. Oh no! Well, I've, I, I'm 50 this year. I've got to have my first. Oh well, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, well, yeah. that's something to look forward. Oh, to. I'm very excited. <laughs> very excited. Uh, Next week, in fact, is uh, when the crew arrive. Uh, no. L let me encourage you to get the general anesthesia rather than the local. Yeah, I'm going for the complete wipeout. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. good. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to hear things. I did it once when I was semi-conscious mm. and. I cannot erase the details of the experience from, from my mind. I see. You know, the tube, it can get kinks in it, and, oh. and the, it sometimes takes two people to manipulate oh, it. Oh, Lord. The, these, are, these are things yeah. better forgotten, and I'm sorry I brought it up. Let, uh, no, well, to be fair, I brought it up, but still, it's, uh, oh. Well, you know, it beats the alternative. I, I, no, it doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, of what? Not doing it? No, not really. Anyway, look, we're out of time. So what do you fancy? A mouth organ, awkward pause, or a big cash prize? Big cash prize? All right. What time is it, Shepard? It's time once again for the big cash prize. Big cash prize. Here's how it works. 50 American dollars. Two ways to win. You can either answer a question, or you can guess what's in my box. Here's how that works. I imagine a box in my head. I don't know what's in it. Only Jeff knows what's in it. Uh, you try and guess what it is. If you get it right, great. Jeff will tell us. And if you're wrong, Ooh, boy. <laughs> what was choice number two? Do you want to just have a question? Yeah, yeah question. Right, yeah. that's what I want. <clears throat> Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Its capital city is Reykjavik. That is known. With, within six months, what is the average shelf life of a condom? <laughs> well, it's not as long as you might think. <laughs> Depends where the shelf is, really, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> But if we're talking Reykjavik, I would say three years. Absolutely close. <laughs> Two. Years is the correct answer! Yes! <laughs> you win 50 American dollars, we'll be right back. Right. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? Good for ratings, bad for ratings. <laughs> we went too long tonight. Say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.